Welcome to a late show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. You might notice when the show is open these days, I'm leaning back in the chair a lot. I'm either very comfortable in this job these days, or I no longer have the core strength to sit up. Let's find out which of those it is. Folks, I'm not going to lie to you. What good would it do? The corona pandemic continues to rage in America's hot zone, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. And reports say the West Wing has turned into a ghost town. Previously, the only ghost haunting the mansion was Mike Pence. He's at least a zombie. Why else is he attracting all those flies? Things have gotten especially tough for the White House correspondents like CNN's Joe Johns, who had this happen to him during a broadcast. Get! There he is. Ah! The damn... <laughs> Frickin' raccoons, man. God, again, this is the second time. Jesus. <laughs> I guess the trap's not working. Right? Hey, man. Raccoon came back. It always comes around right about when I'm gonna go on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Joe Johnson. Stuck there at the White House. He's just stuck there with a, with a disease-ridden, garbage-eating animal running around. Also, that raccoon. But I'm not surprised. Humans have retreated from their natural habitats because of the virus. And the wildlife just moves in. Ed Sullivan Theater has been empty for seven months. I wonder what's going on down there. Jim, do we have a picture? That damn raccoon is sitting at my desk. And he's interviewing Bradley Cooper. And they're clearly having so much fun. Look at the chemistry. Of course, Joe Johns isn't the first newsman to be interrupted by an animal. Happened to Cronkite. Good evening. President Nixon reportedly will announce his resignation tonight. And Vice President Ford will become the nation's 38th president tomorrow. That word... <laughs> With COVID running rampant throughout the executive branch, this morning the Commission on Presidential Debates announced that the second presidential debate will be virtual. Virtual? How's that gonna work? Hopefully it'll be like Tron. So instead of discussing the economy, they'll just race around on light cycles. Of course, they'll need to update their wardrobe. The decision did not sit well with Trump's campaign manager, Bill Stepien, who, by the way, also has the COVID. Stepien claimed the new format is unnecessary because Trump will have posted multiple negative tests prior to the debate. That's not how any of this works. You can't put all your faith in something that might happen down the line when the potential consequence is death. That's like saying, look, I know your parachute isn't working now, but I have full confidence that we'll get it up and running before we reach terminal velocity. Hand me that scotch tape. So, what will this virtual debate look like? We might never find out because after it was announced, Trump immediately called Maria Bartiromo of Fox Business and said this. I'm not going to so, do a virtual debate. I'm not going to waste my time on a virtual debate. Yes, Trump's time is very precious, he said, while calling Fox Business in the middle of a deadly plague. But it was no surprise to hear Trump's main gripe about a virtual format. And then they cut you off whenever they want. He's afraid of having to follow the rules that he agreed to. These referees have all these stupid football rules. If they won't let me stab the quarterback, I'm taking my blood-soaked ball and going home. The subject shifted to COVID and whether or not the president thought he was a disease vector. You say you feel great, but the media is out there saying, well, you're contagious. Do you feel that you are? I mean, obviously, you no, wouldn't I don't think I'm feel that way if you're saying you're to ready to go to a rally. I don't think I'm contagious at all. What kind of question is that? Do you feel contagious? Follow up, what does the economy smell like? And how high is when? Trump assured Barty Romo that he's probably okay. Uh, I'll be tested condition... very soon, but I'm, I'm essentially very clean. Uh, they say it's over a period of six, seven days. And uh, I was, uh, I, you know, it was an amazing thing happened to me. I just went in and I didn't feel good. And that's okay. I expect it at some point because I'm out there. I've got to be a leader. I can't, you know, Winston Churchill didn't sit right. in his basement for six months. That's exactly what Churchill did. It's called the Churchill Bunker, and it's now a museum. You should know that because you were there with your family. 
Oh, right, I'm sorry. My mind refuses to form memories that involve Eric. Trump then explained why the virus was so darn hard to stop. Look, it's a tiny, tiny, I liken it to a tiny little microscopic piece of dust. And it gets into your nose or your mouth or your eye, frankly, or something else, or you touch something. So I understand. And then you get better. Sounds like somebody very recently just explained to him how germs work. And Maria, by the way, the reason we're all here in the first place is that when a mommy and a daddy love each other very much, they give each other a very special hug. Then daddy goes and gets spanked by a porn star. Of course, one of the reasons for Trump's miraculous recovery is the new developments in pharmaceuticals that he also thinks he didn't need. We have, I call them cures. I don't call them therapeutics. You take it, it's an antibody drug. You take it and it beats the hell out of it. And I'm telling you, I could have yeah. walked out there 24 hours after I went in. I didn't even have to go in, frankly. I think it would have gone away by itself. You know, it's great. And what I'm doing is I'm going to supply this drug. It made me better, I will tell you right now. I walked in. I didn't feel great. I think I would have done it fine without drugs. You know, you don't really need drugs. I've stopped. I don't take them anymore. No, I don't take them anymore. Okay. I'm taking, I think I'm taking almost nothing. So these drugs are great, but he doesn't need them. But they cured him right away, and he's going to fast-track them but he would have been fine without them, so he's not taking them. Why is it that he took the experimental drug and we're the ones experiencing dizziness, confusion, and nausea? Shortly after Trump's phone in with Fox Business, he released a new video on Twitter in which he bragged about how good he's been for the military. I took over a depleted military, old equipment, broken equipment, even in the army, all brand new uniforms with the belt, everybody wanted the belt. What does that mean? You're bragging about getting them a belt? By the way, I've got enough bad gifts in my life to know when somebody's just trying to be nice. Wow! Wow, it's a belt. Thank you. I was just saying how much I need a belt. Especially one with a, is that a, is that a, is that a pewter cow skull buckle? This is exciting. Hey, do you have the receipt? I just want to frame it so I can remember the time I got this really great belt. And it's not just the president. Some pretty important White House staffers are testing positive, too. For instance, one of Trump's military aides tasked with carrying the nuclear football reportedly has the coronavirus. But don't worry. They found someone at the White House willing to step in. You know how the world is insane right now? And every day you think, that's got to be it. Things can't possibly get more insane, right? Well, today got more because the FBI says it thwarted a plot to violently overthrow the government and kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. What? Also, <laughs> is this real life or are we trapped in a new season of 24? I was just getting used to being trapped in a crossover episode of The West Wing and The Walking Dead. And, and did they mean take over the government of Michigan? I'm not sure what that would do. Endanger our AC Delco auto parts supply? Lower America's strategic reserves of fishing licenses? The good news is the guys are in custody. And Governor Whitmer and her family are all safe. So who were these numbskulls? Well, the Michigan Attorney General identified the group as the Wolverine Watchmen. So to clarify, this anti-COVID rules militia named themselves after a guy who famously can never get sick and people who famously always wear masks. Apparently, these guys were angry about Governor Whitmer's statewide coronavirus lockdown, and the FBI were tipped off to their plans when one of the dummies posted a Facebook video in which he complained about COVID-19 restrictions on gyms operating in Michigan. So the whole revolution could have been avoided if he just sprung for a Peloton? That's the lamest reason to overthrow the government. Sure, I understand the necessity of state-mandated health standards, but I draw the line at losing definition in my deltoids. Okay? Look at that. I'm just counting the shreds right here. Well, at least now they can all concentrate on getting ripped in jail between the daily hour in the yard and a steady diet of potatoes and expired taco meat. They're sure to get jacked. So the feds gathered all the evidence they needed against these maroons thanks to an FBI confidential source who recorded the meetings in Dublin, Ohio. 
Talk about getting the short end of the undercover stick. And for our next assignment, uh, Tim will be going to Dublin. Ohio. Sorry, I should have I should have led with Ohio. These uh, dinguses were also planning to take out a bridge, which they felt would also hinder the police's ability to follow them on water on, I'm going to guess, surfboards? Or as they actually put it, in an actual group chat, which actually shows up in the actual court filing, if the bridge emoji go finger pointing down emoji, it also X emoji the wave emoji. And now every single last one of these eggplant emojis is totally screw emojied. The group met numerous times to make their stupid plans, including in the basement of a shop in Michigan that was accessible only through a trap door under a rug. Ooh, a trap door hideaway. What's the matter? Did the rope ladder break to Timmy's treehouse? One of these militia morons was crashing with a friend, the owner of a vacuum store in Grand Rapids, Michigan, who had given him a place to stay in the store's basement after he was kicked out of his girlfriend's home. Must have been kind of hard for that guy to get back into the dating scene. Say, um, you want to head back to my place? The basement under a trap door in a vacuum store? Huh? Yeah. After the FBI raided it, the vacuum store owner expressed disbelief, saying, I felt sorry for him, but I didn't know he was capable of doing this. This is almost insane. I knew he was in a militia, but there's lots of people in a militia that don't plan to kidnap the governor. I mean, give me a break. First off, I knew he was in a militia, but there's a lot of people in a militia. Congratulations, you just won the award for most Michigan sentence ever. Barely beating out, if you're going up north for the summer to visit some youpers, you better pack a lot of pop. And secondly, I just want to remind everybody in a militia, you're not in a militia. You're a bunch of buddies getting together to play with guns. If I play a game of catch in the front yard, it doesn't mean I've been signed by the Yankees. But hey, just because they're violent domestic terrorists doesn't mean they don't know how to have a good time. According to the undercover agent, at one point, one of the militia said, Oh, no, we're not kidnapping. That's not what we're doing, which sparked general laughter. Amidst the laughter, another voice said, we're adult napping. <laughs> I love a good homegrown terrorist joke. My favorite is, knock, knock. Who's there? It's the FBI. You're all going to jail. We've got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Mindy Kaling and former CIA director John Brennan. But when we return, meanwhile, join us, won't you? Yeah.